confused. Yes. That happens a lot around here. <clears throat> we want to get you right back to Joe Lewis Arena and back to the podiums where Mike Babcock's addressing the media. Mike, I know it's difficult, but do you have an explanation on why this team has surrendered 20 third period goals, by far and away the most in any period? No. What, do you want me to talk about tonight's game, or do you want me to talk about... Well, I would just say to you this. I thought we did tons of good things tonight. Uh, we made some uh, young mistakes in the, in the third period, and they ended up in our net. But, uh, you know, I liked how... Uh, I liked their energy. I liked their focus. I liked how we did quite a bit. But I didn't like the first power play goal because we got too high. And then, obviously, you know, you can't hit the guy in the leg and give up the... the the penalty shot, but uh, you know, I thought we did lots of good things, and in the end, we didn't handle it, whether it be pressure or execution or whatever it was in the third. Yes, Mike, you just talk about the uh, the call on the penalty shot, uh, what you saw from it, and did you think that, were you surprised, or did you think it was warranted? You know, how do I win? Doesn't matter what I say. You know, I thought the worst call of the night was the the one on Datsuk. Like, that was awful. Mike, can you talk about how key it was that they got to the front of the net with a couple of key goals there, one by himself and one guy couldn't get out of the way? Well, I think uh, the one, we had a, a broken stick in the corner and then got caught in between. And then another one, we followed the rim up the wall instead of just riding our check a little bit longer and our, our four got beat to the wall, which happens sometimes in a cycle on a long rim. And uh, so we got caught on the wrong side of that, and Cleary had fallen down in the corner, so you didn't have anybody a second layer for coverage. Uh, Mike, uh, you've been through the game seven thing. Your team's been bouncing back all year. Here you got one more time you're asked to, I don't know, the old cliche, backs against the wall. Yeah. Uh, how is the uh, what's happened before give you some sense of confidence as a team? Well, I even think tonight gives us a sense of confidence. It's not like they came in here and squashed us or anything. They got what we gave them tonight, period, in my mind. Uh, if we, uh, if I would have told our whole team before this series, if I would have told Detroit and Michigan before this series that we were going to be playing Chicago in game seven, I think everyone would have been pretty excited about that. I love game sevens. I'm excited about it. We got a chance to push them out of the playoffs. What's your takeaway from that? You got to spin it the right way anytime you're at that podium. But uh, he did say that the Hawks took what the Wings gave him. And that's exactly how this game played out. Uh, and then he has to get past that. You notice he didn't, he didn't put the finger at Brendan Smith, who was clearly a goat on a couple of these goals. He didn't mention Carlo Koliakovo by name. Didn't even squawk about the officiating. So, uh, well, a little bit. But so they know they have to put this behind them and try to get ready for an exciting game seven. <laughs> I, I like what he said about the penalty shot there. He didn't say it was a bad call. He said, our guy's got to get it past uh, the shot blocker there. It was Koliakovo's shot that allowed Froelich to get the extra step on him. Uh, the refs are going to call that. Uh, Wings fans won't be happy about it, but it was the right call. Uh, unfortunately for the Red Wings, Froelich made him pay with a beautiful backhand. All right, let's move on to the California Clash. Game 7, Sharks and Kings. It's tomorrow night, and so far, home teams have held sway. You see the Kings, the Sharks, both perfect so far this postseason at home. Home teams overall 48-21, and 21, and in this round, 18 and 4. This game's going to be in Los Angeles. Jonathan Quick will definitely be in net. So if you're San Jose, how do you want to get inside his head? You want to get you want to get inside his head. You want to clip him. You want to get some some hit on him whenever you can. And Johnny's got to be nimble. He's got to be quick, but not stupid. So watch him here. <laughs> Gets bumped a little bit. And and this is these are going to be should be called penalties half the time. But once this happens, he can't lose his composure. He has to fight the puck. Watch the push, the face wash here. You can see he's had enough. I mean, he's a competitive guy. I think Couture, but I don't know why they didn't call that one. But you can see he's just dumbfounded. Throws the puck at Couture right there. Uh, he's got to stay focused on this one. He's as competitive as, it, as they come. Let the win be enough. 
Give me one thing both teams want to avoid. Uh, don't flip the puck up and over the glass from your own zone because it's turned out to be the team that has done that, is guilty of it, has lost. Game two, it was Velastic already down a man for San Jose that flipped it up and over there. Delay a game penalty called. And on the ensuing power plays, the LA Kings scored twice before Velastic could leave the penalty box. They go on to win that game. Uh, the following game, game three, it's early when Jake Muzzin flips his puck up and over the glass there and leads to San Jose's goal within seconds of Muzzin hitting the uh, penalty bench. It's a goal by Dan Boyle. Uh, San Jose rolls on to win that one. Game six, uh, already down a man. The LA Kings, Andre Kopitar just flips it up. Look how close that was. Unbelievable. It's in the stands. San Jose's on a five on three and Thornton's got a huge goal and they go on to take game number six. All right, we are just about out of time here. A couple Game 7s out west, and we are back Tuesday night for Game 7 action between the Sharks and the Kings. Our coverage will get going with NHL Live at 8 p.m. Eastern. As always, for all the latest NHL news and notes, you can visit us online at ProHockeyTalk.com. For Mike Melbourne and Keith Jones, I'm Liam McHugh, and we will see you Tuesday night. Network thanks you for watching this presentation of the Stanley Cup Playoffs.